Hello everyone, it's another video with your favorite bald-headed scrambler-loving degenerate, Yami Noob. Today we have another list of the top 10 motorcycles for something, or rather the top 10 most hated motorcycles. It's okay if you own one, this is just poking fun, but yes, people actually hate these bikes. Why do they hate them? Well, it's probably because they're popular, or maybe it's because they perform better than other bikes, and that causes jealousy, or maybe it's because they have some polarizing looks. Either way, it's known that these bikes are indeed hated on. Before we get started though, in case any of you missed it somehow, we're giving away three more motorcycles. We've got a Honda CB650R with those drop dead gorgeous looks and those header pipes. Come on guys, look at those things. How nice is that? A DRZ400 and a Kawasaki Ninja 400. All brand spanking new 2019 model year bikes with zero miles. If you want to enter for a chance to win, hit the link below to get pre-registered for our giveaway. We'll be launching and accepting entry sometime in mid-November, so if you want to sign up and get notified of when you can get entered to win, definitely click the links below. We're going to do it just like we did the last ones, except we're going to be moving off of Patreon and onto our own site. We're doing that so you can keep track of your entries for the giveaway, earn more chances if you'd like, and access even more cool perks as a member. We'll still have our Discord server, exclusive content, and much more. It's going to be awesome. You'll be able to sign up and support the series, get entered for free, or get merch and get entered that way. So whichever way you prefer, we'll have it come mid-November. Also, congrats to our winners of the last giveaway, John from Texas won the SV650, and Lewis from Missouri won the Yamaha R3. Check out my Instagram to learn more about their story. All right, with that, let's check out these hated bikes. Number 10, the Kawasaki ZX14R. If the Suzuki Hayabusa wasn't a big enough bike that can go fast, enter the Kawasaki Ninja ZX14R. I'd like to take a minute and reflect on how confusing it is that every Kawasaki sport bike or sporty bike is called a ninja. Can you find something else to call them? Everything is a ninja to them. Yamaha doesn't do this. Anyways, the ZX14R had one target, and that was the huskiest bike in the world, the MF Hayabusa. The ZX14R actually dethroned the Hayabusa for the fastest production bike, but we're not going to talk about that until the H2 and H2R came along. Why do we hate the ZX14R? It's just another Hayabusa. It's too big at almost 600 pounds, it has a ridiculous look with four headlights, and you know those East Coast boys are just going to stretch and lower it. If they make another bike such as the Yamaha R13 or R14, god I hope not, you know it entered the same culture as the Busa and the ZX14. They're just big bikes that go fast in straight lines. Find one without chicken strips on it. I dare you. Number nine, the Kawasaki Ninja 250. Another Kawasaki made our list. It's almost as if they make a bike for every purpose and call them all ninjas, and it's almost as if I'm extremely biased towards these bikes, in a bad way. The Ninja 250 is a bike that makes our list because of its social presence. Alone, it can be a nimble, quick bike with the agility to rip through the inner city streets. On a group ride, everyone asks where the 250 is at. If you've ever hung out with the 600, 750s, or leader bikes, everyone's waiting on the 250, unless you're that crazy fast dude who takes his 250 out on the track and you're always just ripping through the twisties. We give you the respect of being involved in the motorcycling community, but the 250cc presence in the group ride has to go. Time for a 600 or a leader bike, my dude. Send that cookie into the sun. It looks fast, it has the ergonomics, and is a great beginner bike. We just hate it because it's not quite matured past puberty yet. For the Ninja 250 riders out there, we're going to call you nerds. You're riding a bike capable of tearing tire treads in the Rossi zone, but most of you choose to sit upright, never lean, and God forbid break the speed limit. You do you. Ride your own ride. The rest of us will be waiting for you to catch up. Now cue all of the angry 250 dudes in the comment section below. Number 8, the GSX-R600. Some people will argue that the Suzuki GSX-Rs have this great racing heritage and serve the best bikes around. Others will simply gravitate toward them like a light to flies. The GSX-R or Gixxer 600 hits our list because everyone hates them. As the beginner squid bike, the 600 is capable of cracking mega dank nooners, ripping quarter miles in the tens, and also, Lord Rossi save us, getting stretched. It's a 600. Please don't stretch it. The front wheel comes up by choice, not by power. The GSX-R600 is a great bike, don't get me wrong. The riders that choose it are more the reason why we don't like it. Stretched out, lowered, custom paint job on the rider that says my 600 did 190 miles per hour are all reasons why this thing just grinds our gears. 
If you have a GSX-R600 and it's not stretched, nor is it your squid missile of choice, then we have no quarrel with thee. Unstretch your 600, wear some gear, and maybe you guys can change the image of the Jixxer 600. For the rest of the riders out there, mirror deletes, illegal lane splitting, and banging the rev limiter through traffic will continue to be the norm for you guys. No other 600cc motorcycle has such a massive squid following like the Jixxer. Hashtag squid life. Number seven, trikes and wannabe bikes. Whoa, would you look at that? It's a motorcycle with three wheels. Wait, that makes it a trike, not a bike. It's not a motorcycle, but it kind of is a motorcycle, but we hate them because people think that they are or aren't. It's just a weird gray area. For the average army out there, the only difference between a Yamaha R1 and a Can-Am Riker is one extra wheel. Wrong. The biggest difference between a motorcycle and anything else is how it's controlled. Watch Twist of the Wrist because they actually go over how riding a bike with training wheels and then removing them confuses children. Think of the children. With training wheels, you're steering normally. Without them, you begin counter steering, a unique method to control only motorcycles and other forms of transportation with two wheels. Trikes come in all different configurations. The Polaris Slingshot is a three-wheeled car. No arguments there. With one wheel up front, two wheels up front, it doesn't matter, counter steering never occurs, and it's why we don't really love three-wheeled vehicles. However, if you are disabled or you need to ride a three-wheeled vehicle, God bless you, keep it up, do your thing, I love you, Papa Yam is here for you. Number six, Ducati. The Ducati, hell, any Ducati really, Ducatistas are the reason that we hate Ducatis. I myself am a Ducatista, it's a weird feeling. I don't really think I am, but I think I embody a lot of the tenets of the Ducatista. It's not so much the bike, maybe the price, maybe the fact that they have Japanese bikes that we'll have in the next five years. We don't know. The Ducati is the Ferrari of the motorcycling world. It's great to have one, but everyone thinks you're a dick for having one. Nothing says you should have finished college and started a rewarding career like Ducati. The only thing thanking you right now is a Honda Grom, moped, or scooter. Maybe school isn't such a bad idea after all. Imagine if that famous line from Fast and the Furious was, sorry, more than you can afford, pal, Ducati. It's just fitting. The Panigale V4R is like 40 grand, it's way out of reach for many, and it's probably why the brand is hated so much. Envy is a hell of a drug. Number five, the Honda Grom. If you stand over five feet and two inches tall, then you'll probably look goofy on this little 125cc bike. I'm talking about the Honda Grom. Why do we hate it? It's small, it's really small. This thing should come with a carry handle. It kind of reminds me of an updated and new version of the Moto Compo motorcycle that Honda made back in the 80s that was supposed to fold and fit into the back of a Honda Civic that businessmen were supposed to take whenever they got into the city. Really cool concept if you've ever heard about it. The Honda Grom is for the rider that can't get away from the mini bike scene. Although these bikes can be some of the most fun you'll ever have on two wheels, a close call with the bicycle might change your ideas. The Grom is legal for street use but lacks any practicality to go to highway speeds or or even merge onto streets with cars moving at over 45 miles per hour. I'm not saying to never get on a Grom and have some fun. There are loads of fun. I am saying that it might be too much of an adjustment for a lot of riders out there. The versatility and ability to pop little baby wheelies is one of the best uses of a Grom. Everything else kind of isn't. Number four, Harley Davidson. You either love the brand or you hate the brand. Harley Davidson never fails to polarize and is next on our list. For some, Harleys have a great sound, shiny chrome, and are an American classic. For others, they're obnoxiously loud, they all look the same, and they're these giant road bikes that serve one purpose and it isn't cornering. Harley Davidson is trying to appease the sportier interest of a few people, and their new live wire is an interesting thing, but their main selling point is that if your father had one, your grandfather had one, now it's your time to have one. It's okay to ride a Harley, it's not okay to be a Harley snob and not wave back at the rest of your two-wheeled comrades. You're not that cool because you're on a Harley, bro. You're just not. Number three, terrible custom bikes. Some motorcycles are tributes to heroes, first responders, or serve purposes for charities. Others, well, they're just garbage and that's why we hate them. Custom bikes made our list because we see them all the time. From our It Came From Craigslist series and what's available on Facebook, these bikes aren't worth the price the owners are asking, nor your time. From one-off custom cruisers with giant ape hangers to everyone else is doing it stretched and lowered boosts, we here at Yammy Noob hate all of these custom bikes. 
Much like trucks with the Cali Lean or the Carolina Squat or even cambered Honda Civic, there's nothing about terrible motorcycles that is appealing. A lack of ergonomics, taste and modifications and functionalities make these bikes useless. In a weird way, I do love them ironically, but I can't say that I actually do like them. A big waste of time, money, and effort goes into these bikes. Why are people spending thousands of dollars on a stretch kit for a $1,500 bike? We may never know, but we're just not into it. Stop using the word custom to describe a clapped out bike you put together with spare parts and a tacky paint job that your cellmate owed you. Number two, Hayabusa's. You didn't think this bike would escape our list, did you? Number two is the Suzuki Hayabusa, probably one of the most recognizable sport bikes on the planet and a very polarizing one thanks to its giant kanji graphics and looks. The Hayabusa is hated because, well, it was the fastest production bike produced at the time. It became a standard amongst the automotive crowd. My Mustang will smoke a Busa, my Lambo will eat a Turbo Busa. Using the Hayabusa as a reference is basically saying it's fast as hell. Saying a Turbo Busa is basically saying it's really fast as hell. The world of insane speed starts as the gateway known as the Hayabusa benchmark. Without it, we wouldn't know how fast your friend's Civic is or how ridiculous some other bikes are. The Busa is the benchmark of speed and will always hold a special place in my heart. And remember, if I get a million subscribers, I'm gonna get a Turbo Busa. Seriously, don't you wanna see that dream realized? Please. <laughs> Number one, our last bike on the list, the Kawasaki Ninja H2. There was a battle for the fastest production bike between the Hayabusa and the ZX14R, then Kawasaki decided to add the H2 and the H2R, and with those they walloped Suzuki on the chin with a massive supercharged punch. For those on the streets, the H2 is the only legal one, and that's why we hate it. It's a supercharged leader bike with absolutely ridiculous amounts of power and a top speed above 200 miles per hour. It's a bike we all revere but simultaneously hate, because no matter what you're riding, you're justifying why your bike is a better choice than the H2. You're also wondering what it would be like to have an H2 as well. Come on guys, we all thought about it. The bike has the potential to stop shows, stomp turbo boosts, and probably even steal your girl. Ironically, it's still called a ninja, just like the 250. We're jealous, we kinda want one, but we also hate it. Okay, we love it. No, we hate it. Ah! Thanks so much for watching guys, I hope you had some fun with this video and got something out of it. If you liked it, go ahead and subscribe, we put out content on a near daily basis, and share the video with a friend, it really does help. Do you own any of these hated bikes? Do you have an opinion on it? Do you want to sound off in the comments section? Well, you better let me know. And again, don't miss out on getting pre-registered for our motorcycle giveaway. By hitting the link below and signing up, you'll get notified of when we launch our new giveaway in mid-November. Thanks again, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Fact. In the early 20th century, men of society eschewed traditional polish using champagne to shine their shoes instead. In fact, Olga Berluti, a high-end shoe designer whose company is owned by the LVMH, Moet Hennessy Louis Vuitton umbrella, still uses Dom Perignon to polish her famed shoes. That is the most bougie thing I have ever heard. Goodbye.